So I just got these in the mail. They were sent to me by Pearson Addison Wesley, which is one of the largest publishers in the world for programming and software engineering books. So there's a mix of classic as well as some of their featured books for 2022. So let's go through each one, see what they're about. I might go through a few chapters and then at the end, I can give you guys an opinion on whether I think it's a buy or who would wanna purchase that particular book. The cool thing is most of these books Actually, all of them, except for one, are language agnostic, meaning they're not just like intro to JavaScript where you're learning for loops and if statements. They're software engineering principles that can be applied across many different languages, frameworks, and applications. I will leave an Amazon link to each one of these books down in the description. They are affiliate links, so if you use them, thank you. They do support the channel, so I appreciate that. All right, so let's start with the first book here, which is Modern Software Engineering by David Farley, who actually has his own YouTube channel called Continuous Delivery. So if you want, you can check him out. So this book is really like a collection of best practices. It dives deep into things like how to work iteratively, how to manage your code as the complexity grows, how to loosely couple your code and have a separation of concerns, things that would probably take you years of experience to figure out, you get it all here in this book. So a lot of good stuff in here. My only complaint is there's not a whole lot of code. It's just a lot of basic examples in Java and Python. So if you're looking for something a little bit more practical, a little bit more hands-on, this might not be for you. I still do think it's a good book for anyone aspiring to be a software engineer and really treating it as a true discipline. There's still a lot of good takeaways in here, whether you're new to software engineering or you've been building software for decades. All right, next book we have is The Pragmatic Programmer by David Thomas and Andrew Hunt. So this is one of the all-time classic programming books. Uh, let's see, when did it come out? So it says copyright in 2020 and it's the 20 year anniversary. So it came out around 2000. It's about 300 pages long and it's very similar to the previous book in that it tries to define what it is to be an effective programmer. So it emphasizes on things like how to write your code so it makes the future less painful, making things easier for our teammates and just overall good habits. The 20th anniversary edition removes some of the out of date examples and replaces them with more modern content. The book is written as a collection of short topics like decoupling, basic tools like Git and debugging, as well as algorithm speed. The idea of dry or don't repeat yourself originated from this book. So it's the idea that you shouldn't be repeating the same work in different parts of your program. So this is a book that every programmer would benefit from reading. All right, next, uh, which camera do we wanna look at? This one, this one. Principles of Web API Design by James Higginbottom. As someone who's worked in web API design most of my career, this is a book I'm very excited to dive deeper into. This book discusses principles and processes across the entire API design lifecycle. So this book is split into five parts. Part one is introduction to web API design. You just learn about the principles. Next up is aligning on API outcomes. So this is more of the planning phase. Three is defining candidate APIs. So you're just doing some API modeling. Part four is designing APIs. And then finally, part five is redefining the API design. So this is not an implementation book. Uh, there's no source code, just a little bit of JSON, but it could be good for someone who's like a technical product manager where you don't necessarily need to know exactly how the code works, but want to learn about good API design from a higher level. The thing I do like about this book is that there are a ton of diagrams throughout it, which for me is good because I'm more of a visual learner. So I'm definitely excited to take a closer look at this one. All right, next up we have Clean Code by Robert C. Martin. This is one of the most well-known programming books ever. It was published in 2009. It's over 400 paid. Granted, a lot of it is code snippets. It does focus heavily on Java and object-oriented programming. So if that's not your thing, you might wanna pass on this one. What I like about this book is that it gives examples of bad code, explains why it's bad, and then shows a fix for it. So this is an example of a not clean function. I really wish they had line numbers here. That's one of my pet peeves is code examples without line numbers, but We'll deal with it. So we don't really need to get into it, but there's a lot of cluttered code in here. His rule of thumb is if you can't understand a function within three minutes, it's not clean. So this function is just a total mess. There's too much going on with odd strings and function calls and double if statements controlled by a flag. And then down here, it shows a fix for it. He took a lot of the code out and put it in its own separate functions and just has you know made the code more maintainable easier to read and modular. So it covers a lot of different programming concepts like 
functions, classes, and even comments and shows how to make them cleaner. Hence the title. All right, next up we have Python Distilled by Dave Beasley. This is the only language specific book of the bunch, uh, but they did recommend this to me. At first glance, I was a little surprised. In the first chapter, the author introduces every topic. So down here we see it gets into objects and classes, packages, exceptions. So I would not recommend this book if you're this is your first language because you're gonna get confused. I do like how the book does get into advanced topics. I read the book Python Crash Course, and although I learned a lot, I still felt like I only knew the basics. Like Python Crash Course will take you from beginner to intermediate. Python Distilled would take someone who's intermediate and turn them into more of an advanced Python dev, which is actually perfect for me because I'm intermediate and I would like to take my skills to that next level, which is not what I'm gonna get out of most Python books because most of them are sort of introductory. Uh, another complaint I have is that a lot of the code snippets are a little bare. For an advanced topic, I would like to see a little bit more. I don't know, maybe I'm used to Java where you have to write a lot of code to do a little bit. In Python, you can write a little bit of code to do a lot. But for me, I like a little bit more context in the code when I'm learning a topic than just one of these bare examples. All right, finally, we have Code That Fits in Your Head by Mark Seaman. This is another book that was published in 2022. And to be honest, it's kind of hard to tell what this book is about. Like, there's no thesis. It, it seems like it's more of an assortment of different concepts, which isn't a bad thing, but just keep that in mind going into it. What I do like about this book is that it works with one code base and builds upon it. So this book is broken up into two parts, acceleration and sustainability. For acceleration, you see the code base go from zero or no code all the way up to deployment. Along the way, you're gonna learn concepts like encapsulation, decomposition, and API design. Part two is about sustainability. So it goes into how you would maintain a large code base as you add features, run into bugs or performance issues. So you're gonna be going into topics like editing unit tests, separation of concerns, and performance. All code examples are written in C Sharp, but the author says, you should be able to follow along if you know Java, C++, or TypeScript. So let me know if you guys have already read any of these books and what you think of them or which ones look interesting to you. Again, I will have links down in the description for each one of these in case you wanna check them out. I think all of them have like a 4.5 star rating or higher, so you don't just have to take my word for it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and keep on coding.